So what's that picture look like with me putting my headset on? Does it look good? Well, do you want to take another picture with your headset on? Sure. You know, we could do that if you actually put your headset on. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right, this is a picture. We're going to open our eyes. In a world where it seems like way too many people have a podcast and several are getting big deals to bring their podcast to other networks, one podcast has a very few amount of viewers. <laughs> Or rather, that's listeners. Hey, it's even my mom has a podcast. But they're the best listeners. I'm Vaughn Fry, and joining me is... Mom. Yeah, and this is what we do. We actually haven't done this in a couple of weeks because you were set to be on a vacation. So we recorded an episode ahead of time where I talked about being a stripper at a bachelor. I mean, oh, comedian brother. at a bachelorette party. And you ended up not going on the vacation. You want to elaborate on that? Oh, we had... Took three weeks to get something that was wrong with our Jeep fixed. Uh, what was it? A I don't know. Was it transmission fluid leaking or was it no. a suspension thing? Anyway, they had to get a part from Kansas City, and it took a couple of weeks to get here. <laughs> Even though it's almost in the same like state. Four hours, you know. three hours away. All right, here, we. I'm going to open a, a, a Summit Red Bull Thunder, the Aldi version of Red Bull, which tastes pretty close to the real thing. But cost a lot less. Like how much less? It's got to be half or less something. It's almost a dollar per can, which at twelve ounces you used to be able to get sixteen ounces per can, but you know now you can't because Pepsi bought Rockstar and decided to jack the price up to monster price, and now it, all everything is you know two two something a can, but buy two get get the third one free is what they do and that sort of stuff. Yeah, prices are crazy these days. Yeah, it sure is. I do want to talk about a little device we've got over here. This is an Accurite rain gauge. Oh. Glass rain gauge. Now you can actually get these at Walmart and I think they have a W on the on the last like uh, identification or the pin number, what you know, whatever they call it, right? Right. But everywhere else it doesn't have the W. I think the W means made for Walmart, but I got this over at Walmart. You can get these on Amazon. It's the exact same thing. It just has a different code on it. Like they just make a version for Walmart. And the reason I want to mention this is because we're going to kind of compare it to a uh, device I got your husband for his birthday slash retirement. Your father. Well, he's also your husband. Okay. Are you still married? Yes. Well, that's the point. And it's the, <laughs> almost 40 years. The Tempest by Weatherflow. And it is a weather system. We just hooked it up over on the sh uh, shed out back and it measures the rainfall with haptics like stuff kind of trickles on the top of it a little bit of like that and it goes hey that's two inches of rain whatever right oh. something like that how fast the rain's hitting it and everything and we can kind of compare that to the old way of doing it with a glass rain gauge if it ever rains again which it doesn't seem to do very much does it Nope, not in Kansas. You can comment when I talk to you. Well, I, I, I keep thinking I'm hearing the phone ringing. The phone is not ringing. That's the music I'm playing over Man, this And it sounds segment. just like our ringtone. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's why I was coming up trying, okay, well, can your father not get to the phone? What is the problem? <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> you can check out the Accurite glass ring gauge, which, by the way, is about a hundredth of the price of the weather flow but the weather flow you got the app on your phone the tempest app it's really nice your live dad likes weather it tracking super localized yeah they tell you on the news what it is at the airport well you want to know what the wind is here at your house or the rainfall at your house we're pretty or, far from the, or the temperature at your house i think there actually may be some differences there you know, are the clouds there, and other things happening there usually is i mean so yeah it's super easy to set up doesn't seem to have any maintenance about it. Solar powered. Yeah. Everything's cool. And it, it hooks it's up to your Wi-Fi. You get it looks cute, she said. And such nice sons to get their father that for his retirement slash yeah, he, birthday he present. He's been talking about getting a weather system for the longest time. And I thought, he's you know, really, this, that's something he's really wanting. This, this is something that seems pretty neat. And something about old men and weather. I don't know why they all care. Yeah, about the they, it's because so that whole I, my knee is itchy. So it must mean it's there's going to be a hurricane. No, it's like him with him. It's the yard. All right. Well, you can check that. We'll have a link in the description. You can pick these up on Amazon. OK, you can one or both choose whichever. Okay. There you go. Very good. All right. Do you have any uh, 
stories you want to tell I us? have a story. We had a, I had an adventure this morning. So my husband had to go to an oral surgeon to get one of his wisdom teeth removed, believe it or not. The, it's the number one tooth I, that he had to get removed. And so I took him there, and, and he's checking in, and I'm standing next to him like a good wife. And, and he's feeling all this for me. And the lady looks at me, and, and the rule is you have to, she goes, you have to stay in the building. If you walk out of this building, I need to have your phone number. And if, and, and if you don't give me your phone number, we're going to wake him up in the middle of his surgery. And I'm going, okay, well, what a threat. You know, I don't want him woke up in the middle of his surgery. Why do you need to be there? I, I think it's in case somebody like codes or, you know, stops breathing or something, they have to call an ambulance and they want a family member there to make the decision to call an ambulance, I guess. That's something I can figure out. It's kind they of will wake him up in the middle of surgery. That's what they, that's what they said. I've I'm never going, heard oh, okay, that Okay, well, one. that sounds cruel. But, no, so. you'd be like, oh, watch me. That's what you're going <laughs> to do, I'm going to walk right? out this door. I haven't had breakfast yet. There's now. a sale at Kohl's, so I'm just going <laughs> to check in real quick. I've got Kohl's cash. I have to spend it today. So, all right, see you later. <laughs> I'll be back in an hour. No, anyway, so I said, well, I'm not leaving. I'll be right here. I'm not even going to go get in the car or anything. I'm sitting right here so then she, so then she looks at me and she goes have you been have you had anything to drink today <laughs> that's what i like to say to you when we're walking the aisles over at walmart have you been drinking again I know. so i said no i have not it's like 10 o'clock this morning i go no and she says okay and then she said something else have you had anything to eat since midnight and i looked at her and i said she goes i said he's the one having the surgery she goes oh okay i thought it was you Oh, this is a like bad a sign. This is a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, can we reschedule? There, it's people's incompetence just makes me have to do everything entirely by myself. <laughs> I know. You just can't, you can never, you can't, you can't see the incompetence coming and yeah. you're never really fully prepared. I thought you? maybe she wanted to make sure I wasn't, no drunk drivers either. You At know? first, you're, yes. You're a day driver and you cannot be drinking. Well, maybe maybe their restroom facilities don't work either. So she wanted to make sure you had an empty stomach <laughs> no, also. No, they work. So anyway, the place is pretty busy. So I'm sitting there and I'm sitting with my back to this big window. And I'm, I'm talking to these two ladies across from me. And I don't know what we're talking about, but, you know, we were having a conversation. All of a sudden, they both go, oh, no. And they go like this, reaching towards me. I'm going, oh, God, what is going on? And all of a sudden, they're just loud, boom, <laughs> the window. And a bird flew into the window. They said it was a big hawk or something, and it flew right in the window. Man, it was loud. And I'm going, and I'm sitting there, and I don't even, I'm afraid to even look up. I think it's a person hit the Your window. Your ability to not look around is legendary. <laughs> so I just sit there, I go, what was? It. And they said it was a bird. You know, this is not the first time a bird has come to your back like that. We were on a float trip over in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and a bald eagle flew down and snatched a bird about two feet away from your back. And oh, you really? couldn't turn around in time to get I've well, got GoPro footage of it. I kind of have a stiff neck. I've had surgery on my neck, so I can't I really can't turn it fast. Faster than some so people. So did this window some people break or crack or what? No, it didn't break. <laughs> the ladies were looking to see if the bird was still alive. It was pretty funny. Was it? Uh, they couldn't see it, so it must have flew off. Did you think it flew Probably off? Probably stunned. <laughs> flew right off. Anyway, that was an exciting morning. Maybe birds like the back of your head. I your, don't know. Back of your head looks like a nest, maybe. I guess. Is that what it is? I don't know. That's wild. That looks like a good place to jump on. I'm, I'm glad that you save it. For the podcast, I did. I too didn't even tell you. I had that. I yeah, because it happened this morning, and I don't wake up till one. So that's why. That's why we were able to keep that a secret from me. Yeah, Otherwise, is, she shares too many stories before we do the podcast. This guy, this guy overheard her, her ask me if I had been drinking, and he said maybe oh you could have had some of that fancy coffee or that special coffee. And I said yeah, I didn't have any special coffee this morning. Okay, I do have a, another little news announcement of sorts that uh, happened when I was eating like a protein bar, you know, when I woke up in the afternoon. Uh, a guy reached out to me. I, I told you that this uh, OAN, I think it's One American News Network, wanted me to talk about movies. Now they want want me to come on and talk about uh, my comedy and our podcast. Seriously? So we can, I can or rather, I guess it's just going to be me plugging the podcast. Great. I tried to get you to have like Vivek Ramaswamy because he seems to be willing to talk to anybody. If he had talked to you on the podcast and you said. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> And so we, that's why we don't have any, <laughs> any candidates well, talking on the podcast. there are some people I would like to talk to. Who? 
Who do you want to talk to? I talked to Garth Brooks. I don't think we can get him. He doesn't need to talk to you. That's the problem. Well, he knows my cousin. <laughs> so? No, he's from Yukon. We used to live there. Who is your cousin that we're talking about here? Her name is Shelly Reek, and they went to school together. Garth Brooks really does know So her. that's our lead. I need to say, hey, do you know this lady? <laughs> yeah. And then make him think that's my mom and be like, psych, it's my mom's cousin, cousin. <laughs> no, knows of you, so she wants to talk to you. We used to live in Yukon, Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, anyway, middle what? of next month, well, middle of September, I get, it's going to be September by the time anybody hears this. Middle of September, I guess I'm going to be doing like a Skype talk. That's the way we've scheduled it. And right. so that should be the point in which the the wheels really get turning and we get, you know, triple digit listeners. That would be great. That'd be great. Yes. Be great if somebody discovered you're you're really good at comedy. You're really a good stand up comedian. That's just not mom talking. Well, the trick is to not get discovered. Well, you're doing that's, that real that's good. That's really <laughs> what you want to do. Then you have full reign to just talk about whatever you want. And once you get discovered, it's like, eh, yeah, I don't really have an opinion about that anymore. You know, I actually, I tried to use Bing AI because the AI is taking away all the thinky cool jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And I tried to get it to see what it could do based on that bachelorette party. So I'm like, hey, write, write an original joke about the movie Mamma Mia. And it started off and it's like, hey, these girls really had a, a crazy time when they when they try to find out who the dad is. And I'm like, well, that's not necessarily. And then it just started recapping the movie. Oh, and I'm like, where's life? the joke? And it's like, and then this happened. But then she found out it ends with this. And I'm like, I didn't ask for a recap of the movie. Then later I say, hey, uh, can you give me an original joke written by Bill Burr? And, and it said, okay, here it goes. And it starts typing the stuff, right? And yeah. it's like, all right, here's an original joke written by Bill Burr. You know what I hate? Let me tell you. And it starts going to, and I'm, and I'm waiting for it to kind of load. And then it erases all of it. And then it says, hey, you know what? I'm not really comfortable doing this right now. Can we change the topic? Seriously. It does funny. that. Yeah, it does that if things well, get violent. because or, things are probably, cop they probably have come across as copyrighted because aren't, like his jokes, no, I'm sure No, it's like are anything that gets a little mean. It, kind of, it has like a tough time dealing with. It gets a little sweaty. It's like, <laughs> you know, this isn't really for me. Can we change the subject? Let's talk about Star Trek. Too bad like, people it'll do didn't things do like that, that before they hurt each other's feelings. I think that people are acting out. The, the way we have come to treat people online, knowing that they can't punch us in the face, there, there's so no immediate sad. ramifications. It's beginning to manifest in the real world. I told people this would happen years ago, and now other people are saying it, and they're getting all the credit for the stuff I, I said would happen. And that's why everybody's so, such a garbage person now, and it's like we're living in RoboCop 2 world. Well, I hope that that's not the case. I, I like nice people. You like nice people? And I cannot lie. <laughs> well, I've got something for you, since you think you like nice people. I do like nice I've people. I've got a new game for us. Uh-oh. Okay, do you think you can handle this? Maybe. I call it... Yes, you are going to be tasked with deciphering if five celebrities are dead or alive. Okay. Now, I've got a few categories here. I like here. your song, by the way. Well, it's not me singing. That's that's John Bon Jovi, and I don't even know if we can even play that much of it, so we'll see how long that lasts, all right? Well, I hope they'll let us. Well, you it. requested another song be played, too, also, so we get to that right I after. Know. Okay. yep. Well, I'll, i got to tell my little story. Another story? Well, I mean my news stories. All I've right, look, news. I've got a few categories here. I've got talk show hosts, actors, actresses, singers, comedians, wrestlers, movie directors, the cast of Glee. Which do, do you... Uh, talk show host. That was the first one I was going to do anyway. Yeah. I just wanted to make it look like you had a choice. Oh, okay. All right, so these are five talk show hosts, and my mom is going to guess which ones are... Phil Donahue. Now, this is the guy who was the forerunner of all things, first to bat, copied by Oprah. Oprah gets all the credit now. Had that first daytime talk show format, walking into the crowd with the microphone, having a few outlandish guests that he had to refute, things yeah, like that. I used to watch him. Dead. You think Phil Donahue is dead? I believe so. Phil Donahue is alive. How old is he? 
Well, he's not young. <laughs> it is he is he I like think, in his nineties. I think he's he's budding into late eighties. Is yeah. he? Okay. Well, and I sorry, believe Phil. he I... may still have a full head of hair. Most likely. Some when once you get to a certain threshold and you have the hair, it never goes away. Have you noticed how and I should have him on here as one of the actors, Bill Murray has been balding for forty five years with the same, you know, largely balding pattern. So has your father. <laughs> No, not the same way. Okay. Not like Bill Murray. Bill Murray is holding on to whatever he's got going on over there. Well, good for him. Next up, Jerry Springer. Super outlandish. Lots he of chaos. He just recently passed away. De- you know, you could wait for me to ask this oh, thing, okay? Sorry. Jerry Springer. You think Jerry Springer is dead? Yes. Jerry Springer is dead Woo-hoo. now i messed up I mean, on the woo-hoo. sound I got thing it right, here and so this is supposed woo-hoo. to be a body falling but i can't oh. turn it off it sounds so it like it kind of just gun. keeps looping so now we're gonna have several people falling while okay. we do that but right. i'll try to fix it next time or if this is funny enough people can just keep falling <laughs> yeah, the body falling. falls Quit. and then it picks They're up you drop falling. them again yeah all right next up let's go into late night a little bit okay okay David Letterman started his show, I think, 1982 over on NBC. Later, it actually, it was called The Late Show. Then it became later with David Letterman when he, he got kind of kicked out because he wanted to be loyal to the keyboardist who has no hair and wears sunglasses in studio when it's not necessary or appropriate. And he brought all this stuff over to CBS Hasn't been seen in a while. He went away, got replaced by Stephen Colbert, you know, American Dream, pretty good ice cream, though the guy's a jerk. hairy. Who's Harry? David Letterman. Or was he Harry? Is David Letterman dead or alive? Alive. David Letterman is... Alive. Yes. As best I can tell. I'm not keeping score. I am. (laughs) Next up... This guy hosted the super popular MTV show, which I don't think you can have a super popular MTV show these days. TRL Total Total Request Live, where kids would call in and request Britney Spears and NSYNC in the summer of 99, and he would report from Times Square. Mariah Carey would show up drunk or in a daze of hallucinogens or something, and this was his show. He got brought over to NBC to do a show after Conan O'Brien, I believe, or maybe it was when Conan got the the Tonight Show, and then there was like a third talk show late, and it was Carson, and I think that's gone away, and he's been replaced by an Indian woman who may or may not be employed anymore, but now I think he uh, last was seen on a daytime show, like the Today Show. I haven't really seen Carson Daly in a while. Is Carson Daly dead or alive? Alive. Carson Daly is... Alive. Yay. I haven't seen him in a while, but I haven't heard any news of him dying. Okay, good. Finally, Mari Povich, You Are Not the Father. Very old. His show, I think, uh, went away a few years ago, I think. Or it's it, it all became about, you know, that crazy yeah, over the Springer top. Jerry Springer took over. It, it's like his show became Jerry Springer in a way. Right. But all about finding out who is the, the dad. Is. You're the daddy. He's married to Connie Chung. Haven't seen her in a long time. She could be dead also. No, she's is not. Is Mari Povich dead or alive? Is Connie Chung the one that does um, the She show? was a serious news lady. Oh, okay. They're, uh, they're both alive. Mari Povich and Connie Chung mm-hmm. are... Alive. Alive. Yay. So you missed one, right? Yeah, one to three, right? How many of you did? Well, there's both of them. well, there's five total. One to five. Okay, so that was a new game we did, and I did awesome. Ish. Did you? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Awesome-ish. So you think that was good or not? Let us know and some reach out to me on Instagram, whichever, something like that. Let me know if you like this show we call. You want to get into the news a little? A little. So, you know, um, Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani. I like the way you say it. (laughs) Wrong. Liable for defaming Georgia election workers, and I am so glad he got in trouble for that because that was really 
I mean, he just sat there and just told lies about them, and that really bothered me. And I feel sorry for them, and I'm really glad they're going to get damages. He has to pay their attorney fees plus damages, and I hope they got a lot of damage money. Did he tell lies about them in front of the Four Seasons Outdoor Lawn and Gardening? <laughs> yeah. I, no, I think he did it or sooner than that, actually. He said they were passing uh, floppy di No, um, what are they called? Um, CDs, DVDs. No, the little... USB drives. USB drives. And she was giving her daughter a mint. Even better if they were passing floppy disks <laughs> that no one could read because no one has a device to read yeah, them anymore. that would have been funny. That would have been even better. Yeah, That's, flash drives. Now, that is saying. a way to securely transfer some data right there. Granted, there only about 1.4 megabytes. You'd have to give them the machine to read it, too, though. Oh, that would actually be a pretty good idea. Okay, put that it should, in a book. That needs to be in a mystery novel, right? <laughs> yeah. A Sea Ruth mystery, the floppy drive. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So he's in trouble. Yeah, I'm glad. And he's in trouble for defaming them? Well, he yeah. made them unfamous? Well, he told lies about them. He Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies there like that. There you go. Yeah, he lied. And then we've got our freeze frame. Freeze frame! Mitch McConnell froze up again. <laughs> I did not see this. I heard about this, but I did, did not see it happen. It's crazy. And they say that he's medically, he's been checked out and he's okay, but something's wrong. You just don't freeze up. I mean, I'm so probably made a little stroke. Okay, so or something. he, so I'm guessing this happened in front of cameras. Yes, on it television. did again. They were asking he had questions. stage fright. I mean, what do you want, man? I think that's what it is. It's like you don't blink or anything. You can't do that. Those things on in. On purpose. <laughs> are they calling this a stroke? What are they calling They're this? They're saying medically he was checked out and he's okay, but I'm not sold. Medically he was checked out? Yeah, they said medically, what did they say? Medically cleared. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> we should be experts, right? <laughs> yeah, you sound like a real expert there. Uh, and today, you know, we, we said we were going to talk about politics, and I really don't mean to talk about politics, but this is kind of, I won't even talk about this. Never mind. Okay. Let me talk about something then. Okay. Meg Ryan returns to rom-coms to show that old people are still romantic and she, sexy. She's older than me. Uh, maybe not. I think so. How old is she? I'm going to look this up. So she has a new movie coming, and I'm guessing it's probably not going to theaters because old people are not bankable. And it is called What Happens Later. <laughs> and I guess her romantic uh, opposite here is David Duchovny. How old is he? Uh, he might be younger than her. Probably. David Do. He might be like slightly younger. Okay, 1960. August 7th, okay, 1960. He's 63. Meg Ryan. I mean, it's going to be close. It's going to be very close. I don't think she's older than you, though. I do not think so. When's her birthday? 1961. Okay, she's three years younger than me. Yeah, but she... I don't know if she had work done recently to counteract the work she had done that she looked bad you know in 2008 or so mm -hmm. or something like because like she would the last thing i kind of saw her about was a very awful movie that played at my independent film festival called the deal she was in a movie and she was in this movie and it was weird because it had the wrong synopsis was given to the audience and it said a like a, a young uh, movie writer and a hotshot producer put a, put a movie together, but when their star gets kidnapped by, by terrorists, they have to hatch a plan to free him. That is not what happened in the movie. The star that got kidnapped was LL Cool J, and they just let him be kidnapped. And then they shot the movie anyways without him and just changed the story completely. <laughs> really? And they did not hatch a plan to rescue LL Cool J. And you never even saw, saw or heard of him again. It was kind of one of these things where it was like, hey, I'm a celebrity. I've got a few friends that can pop into my movie for a few. You can shoot for a day, right? LL, okay, sure. Here you go. Like, just say these lines. They never and, did rescue him? It was bad. No, they never rescued him. Never heard from him again. None of that. It was wow. a bad comedy. And Meg Ryan was in it, and uh, she had a bigger part, and she didn't look like Meg Ryan so much anymore, right? Because of plastic surgery, probably. Yeah, but now she just kind of wheels her, uh, you know, that that Jack Quaid, her son, 
Rand, with Dennis Quaid. I've almost said Randy Quaid. That would okay. be an even more interesting son. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. He's just he's just kind of like put into anything she wants to be in. Just like, uh, here, just have my kid be in it instead, right? Uh-huh. I put my kid on Red Letter Me. I put my kid in the Oppenheimer. I put my kid in the boys. You know, sort of just like let the kid do the acting for me. I'll just sit here and, you know, cash checks. Well, I'm she's assuming. already done the acting. So she, yeah, well, but she wants to prove time. old people are still sexy, are they? Yes, they are. If they're three years younger than you, I guess. Are you at the cutoff date? No. By the way, there was one headline that says, the age you stop feeling young. What age do you think that is? You tell me. You're probably more of an expert on not feeling young. You, well, you felt old since, what, 26 maybe? No. I felt, This is the first year I've really started feeling like I'm old because I kept got all these letters saying, oh, you're turning... 65, you got to get pick your social, you got to pick your Medicare and all this. The problem was you were getting letters. That's what made you feel old. I get a bunch of letters. Yeah. See, you don't want to get letters. You want to get I random emails. I had somebody ring the doorbell and say, I want to introduce myself and help you select your Medicare. I'm going, get out of here. No, I didn't Did they say seem that. nice? <laughs> she was real nice. And you said, sorry, I, I went to Kansas City to get that done. I said, already. I, I've already got it all taken care of. Oh, that's disappointing. Here's another little something. 15 direct-to-video movies that deserve more love. Let's look through the uh, list here, see if there's anything. Give them some love. See if there's anything of much that I can kind of comment on. There was a movie called Frozen, which I think this was a movie where it's not what you're thinking of. Let it go. Let it go. This This is people that were stuck on a ski lift. And they froze to death? Well, it's cold, and the ski lift stopped, and they're stuck on it. So what do you do? These things are really high up off the keep ground. Each other I would, warm. That's I would all prefer I can say. not to be on a ski lift if I was That'd totally be bad. honest. That'd be bad. If it was a closed-in ski lift, it's different than one that's out in the open. I don't know. An extremely goofy movie, sequel to the Goofy movie, that which was kind of a goof troop, which was a sort of a a uh, '90s Disney afternoon movie or well cartoon. Starring yeah. Goofy, and he had a son named Max. Oh, I like but Goofy. But that made you question how Goofy had a son. That was never really established. Also, Goofy's a guy. But, you know, he could have a son. Who is he sweeping off his feet? There isn't a Goofy counterpart like there's a Minnie Mouse, right? Well, she's she's in the shadows. By the way, Minnie Mouse looks so much like Mickey Mouse, you'd think they were actually related. Well, there's a lot of couples like that. I'm Daisy telling you Daisy looks like Donald Duck. I, I have a theory you mar- marry somebody. A lot of people marry people or are attracted to people that look like them. Not me, but a lot of people Tremors are. 2, Aftershocks. This was not that awful. This was a sequel to Tremors, Sands, uh, Fred Ward and Kevin Bacon and whoever the gal was, but it still had... The the guy who that well, movie scares me. Ugh. It scares you how? I don't know. It's just scary because I guess when I'm out in the desert or like where there's a bunch of, you know, sand and sagebrush and stuff, I think about it. It's you creepy. think that the graboids are gonna come up and grab things? <laughs> I don't know. Come just, up and grab you? Kind of gives me the creeps. I'll tell you that though, as movie creatures go, that was one of the kind of like last hurrahs for the. The practical effects, super good-looking creature design. Like, I'm not saying the Graboids are attractive, but they they, they look scary. realistic. Yeah. The effects are very strong in that in that movie. There's a lot of really good use of miniatures, and it's got your gal Reba McIntyre shooting them with big guns. Oh, well, there you go. Well, in the sequel, Good old Oklahoma they, gal. In the sequel, they learn that after a little while, they they transform it like they have babies or something, and they and they actually walk on the surface. Like Velociraptors. Oh, and I didn't it, see that part. It didn't. Ha- well, that's the sequel. Oh, Tremors Two: Aftershocks. The thing about it is, it didn't have that awful of effects for a straight-to-video movie of the time. And I thought Tremors was maybe a decent enough of a hit. It could have had a, a sequel in theaters, but you know, it didn't. Instead, ah. they've they've actually had a lot of Tremors movies. And the the guy with all the guns, who was the dad on. Uh, what was Michael J. Fox's show in the 80s? Oh, goodness. Family Ties. The dad yeah, from Family, Family Ties, Ties, he's in every one of them. And, is he? Yeah, and they have made they had a new one just like a year ago, a year or two ago, I think post-pandemic stuff. Okay. And so they've actually made a lot of these, and I they think that's kind of They don't make it to the theaters? No, but I think they actually turn a profit in some way, you know, if they have like seven sequels, they right? They have a lot of followers. Yeah, I guess so. All right, do you have, like, one more news story for uh, us? Okay, it says, golf carts. Could golf carts save suburbia? 
<laughs> we got we have a new rule in the town we live in that you can drive a golf court golf cart anywhere as long as it, the um, posted speed limit is below what 30 30 or below yeah and we have quite a few streets which that is have, fun have because below. we have across from us as a neighborhood they had recently ish like a year ago put up a sign no golf carts beyond this point because they were tired of people from the adjoining neighborhood which, with their golf with, with, course uh, not smaller houses but it wasn't as expensive as exclusive as a neighborhood as the they were other get, ones. they didn't like these people driving their golf carts near the school to the golf and, course and, <laughs> two places okay now they have a new new rule. Yeah. I'm thinking this came up as somebody said, Hey, you're a friend of mine, you're the you're the mayor of, of Derby, I whatever. Want this like, rule passed. I want I'm I want to drive my golf cart further. Yeah. I want to drive up that and cross that neighborhood and I want to go to the places and you know, I just kinda wanna get around town in my golf cart. And so they they had to do that, right? Like right. that's the way these rules Good are old actually established. Boy network. And so you think uh the golf carts are going to save suburbia? Or Maybe no? so. People are driving around in their golf carts. I guess you, don't, you could just go to one car or you could go to no cars if you never went anywhere. Or maybe like you drive a golf cart and if you go to the grocery store, go all over the place. But if you want to go somewhere, then you rent a, rent a car to go on a trip. I have not personally seen all this golf cart grocery getting action. <laughs> but I you haven't know what? seen we any see of them parked of at the grocery store. Scooters that everybody drives around. I've seen the them scooters. go to the grocery store. Like you mean like a, a rascal scooter? Yeah, like they ride, they drive the rascals up to the grocery store. <laughs> I've seen that. Uh, uh, on the sidewalk, yes. Yeah. I do like the fact that not a lot of people are on bikes around here. If they do, they go to the bike path. I do not like bike lanes. Well, that's... You are rolling the dice waiting to get hit by a car if you take your bike into the street. What do you think is more, more dangerous, riding your bike on the street or riding a motorcycle on the street? They're both I don't dangerous. fully understand how either are allowed. We have ever-increasing safety regulations added to automobiles, and motorcycles still exist. Yeah, and they, and they don't make them wear a helmet, do they? Is it a law? Is it not a noise pollution issue either? Like, we how powerful is the motorcycle here. lobby? Yeah. Now, some people have tried to introduce electric motorcycles, but that's considered a safety hazard because now you don't have that loud you sound emitting so coming. that you can alert everybody of your presence. Yeah. But the bicycle doesn't make a ton of sound. That maybe that's why they get hit. They come up when we're walking. You know, we walk on the bike path, and when they come up behind us, I don't hear them. Do well, hear I don't them? either, because usually I'm trying to keep an eye on you. I know you, you keep you like in the drift, your old mom. drift off the bike path, fall down a creek, whatever. I have to try <laughs> to pull you up out of the mud. No, similar things. You also can't cross the street in a quick fashion. Oh, yeah, but you have to cross the street if you're gonna. Do the walk, right? Yeah. Oh, they today on TV they showed the bachelorettes that are sixty. They have to be sixty years old or better. Oh, okay. The new so the bachelor guy, he's 70, is seventy one, right? I think. Seventy one. And they have he to don't be look sixty too or bad older. For seventy something. No, he doesn't. Which, he looks good. That's eh, look goodish. Would you would you want to be at your high point at seventy? Like, hey, I'm in the best shape of my life at seventy. It's kind of <laughs> like you wasted the opportunity, right? No, he's been married. He his wife passed away. All right, do they have to have a spouse that died also? No. I think that would make things more fun. Well, the odds are most of them, I would assume. Are, are I they was doing empty nests or are they raising their grandkids? Honestly, I was surprised there was that many single people, but I guess it's just my world. People Everybody's want married. to be on TV. I know there's lots of mar people married people. People want to be on TV right so they can you know, transfer that into an influencer Maybe thing so. and they can endorse products put the link up on amazon people buy it they get like a nice two percent that's what people want to do you think they got divorced so they could go on there no no though let's not put it past them okay that'd be sad because like all kinds of crazy stuff can happen that's true you want to do the quote thing oh oh yeah thank you okay where's my quote for the day all right it's so great to find that one special person you want to ch to annoy for the rest of your life. <laughs> All right. Now I have to try to guess who this is. I am yeah. given no alternatives. Mom had a simple game where she had a 50-50 guess, and I have to guess among all is, people that have ever I'll lived. I'll give you this. It's a female, and it's it's a, it's a comedian that I, I like. So I don't know if you know which comedian I quote quite a bit. 
a female comedian you quote quite a bit? So we've already done a quote from her. No, I quote something she says. She's famous for saying. Is it Rosie O'Donnell? No. Female comedian. She's no longer alive. Oh, uh, was was this lady possibly killed for calling Michelle Obama trans? No. I think that's who this is. Is it Joan Rivers? No. No? She wasn't killed. One more guess. She was on Saturday Night Live. Original cast, I think. Oh, um... I, I know the name, and I've got to look this up if now. It's, it's, it's either one thing or another. Um, so a, SNL original. Maybe she wasn't original cast. Maybe she, she came was. in like a year she later. She's one of my favorite. But yeah, I know, I know who you're talking about. Gilda Radner. Right. Okay. I didn't look it up, by the way. I was in the process of looking it up, but the muscle memory of, of typing in SNL original cast got me to where I needed to be on that. Did she do much in the way of movies, or did she get... Murdered before she did all the movies. She didn't get murdered. She had breast cancer. She passed away from breast cancer. That was given to her for, for, you know, being a comedian or whatever. No. Like somebody, you know, passed, you know, it was a hit job, right? You don't think so? No. Well, I guess her ancestors could have passed it on in her DNA. And I think I screwed up. I don't think that was Gilda Radner. I think it was Rita Rudner. Who's that? (laughs) (laughs) I totally got the wrong person. R- Rita Rudner? Do you know who Rita Rudner it is? It sounds familiar. How do you spell okay, Rita? Okay, so I'm sorry. That quote is Rita Rudner's. Rita, R-I-T-A-R-U-D-N-E-R. Okay, well, she's not dead. Okay, Rita Rudner, anyway, she said, it's so great to find that one special person in you that you want. I can't even say this. It's so great to find that one special person you want to annoy for the rest of your life. Well, you did a heck of a job of doing that whole segment yeah, by yourself, I really didn't you? Yeah, messed that one up. Sure did. Should we do it over? Are you supposed to say something during the ending? Oh, yeah. All right, now try it again. Bye-bye now. Where is your brain today? I was playing the drums. Well, it's been quite a day. I'm a little bit tired. The hawk gets you? Yeah. Kaboom. <laughs>